Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Danae, and I'm here with a message for you. As you can see, I do not know what's on the, on the underbelly of this deck, but we're going to find out together. But first, um, I have a just a quick little message. I guess it was an upload as I was shuffling the cards, uh, particularly to other creators in the conscious or subconscious community, however you identify yourself, and in the spiritual community overall, to be very mindful of platforms at this time that are looking to uh, more or less corner you into some conformity. You know, particularly, of course, we're here on this platform. So obviously, and this is on, just in case you didn't know, this is the only platform that I have at this time. I don't have Instagram, I don't have Facebook or Twitter anymore. So if you get contacted or um, solicited by any other source, it's not me, just to put that out there. Um, this is the only platform that I'm on at all anymore. Um, for now, may, may change in the future, but this is how I feel guided to move right now and my creativity. But I had this upload particularly, um, now we know that, you, that YouTube's been more um, stringent on their policies and procedures for being monetized and things of that sort, which I'm not even in in um, the runnings for at this time, so it doesn't even directly affect me. But what I had the vision of is that it's like this squeeze that's happening, particularly in the spiritual community, because it's one of the most lucrative communities and it's growing fast, you know, as people are looking for answers, looking for ways of, you know, c connecting with their own subconscious or, you, you know, just getting closer and more engaged in the spirit of their nature, this community is growing vastly. Now, not everybody is here for pure intentions, but it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, because what I see is dollar signs for platforms such as this and others that, um, you know, are almost squeezing the life out of creators being able to kind of speak freely and fluidly to the point where you don't even feel comfortable writing certain things in titles anymore, let alone saying words full out because of the fear of either being demonetized or your videos being striked or taken down or, you know, whatever have you as a, a, a resistance to your right to speech in one way. Now, of course, we know this platform has a right to to um, set certain guidelines. We know that, but I feel like there's a deeper, there's a darker um, uh, um, intention here that not only is it looking to to squeeze the life out of the spiritual community for the for the purposes of um, sensory and censorship, which is universal, yes, but particularly the spiritual community. The other side of that is that it's making things uncomfortable for those that have come to rely on the um, material exchange and monetary. Uh, gain from this platform, making it uncomfortable for you to kind of push it back up against the wall so that they can then come in and offer you something else. Now, how I see it is there's this possibility of there being um, a community that the site itself is trying to conform, uh, form or formulate or put together that's like a, a covenant of such of um, spiritual creators that because you you know they'll they'll present this you know this entrance into this society of sorts to be a part of you know this partnership which i know it's already you two partners but this is something separate that i'm seeing and feeling in the spirit that they're causing this great resistance so that you'll feel so constrained by the way you used to make money and how you've begun to depend on the site for that exchange that you'll comply with just about anything that they offer, you know, in terms of being in this partnership of creativity, so to speak, where maybe even perhaps in this idealism of more create of, of more freedom and liber and liberty to speak and share 
if you are in connection with them in some other way. So whereas before a lot of creators make money off of super chats and streaming and, um, you know, direct donations to the cash app. And I know YouTube has some, some stake in that, but I feel like they're trying to push like herd the traffic in another direction because they see how lucrative it is. Um, individually to creatives, they want to be able to capitalize off of that, almost have the monopoly on the majority of spiritual creators by pushing it back up against the wall. May, you know, this is like the testing ground, so to speak, with what you can say, what you can't say, scrutinizing every little thing in your video to almost uh, condition you in a sense for this conformity. So now everybody's so afraid to speak freely that you're falling in line with it. You know, those that have been monetized and making money from this site. Um, and then they'll come in and offer you, well, this, we have this over here. Like, say it's like a whole, like, on, like only fans for, for the spiritual community in a sense, which, you know, I know that there is, um, there are memberships where you have more liberty and I know that there is, um, Patreon, but it's something else. It's something else that I'm sensing or some other way they're packaging it to present it as, at some, you know, some escape route from the constraints of the general site. I have to sit with it a little bit more because this literally just came through to me as I was shuffling moments before, you know, this moment now, but it was felt so strong in my spirit that I wasn't sure if I was going to share, but as soon as I pushed record, it just kind of started flowing out of me. So I guess it's meant for me to share and to ultimately say to other creators in this regard here, that are particularly um, dependent on monetary exchange from the site. Don't allow you, and it's another way to kind of be a distraction as well, you know, to, so that people don't even speak freely in the spirit anymore because they're too um, anxious about saying the wrong thing, lest their video be demonetized or there's some strike or whatever, you know, whatever the repercussions are that are presented now. Speak freely. The spirit will reward the the, the um, return for your uh, faith and for your um, your devotion will be received in dividends when you're true to the nature of the spirit. Don't even this place that used to be so sacred for others to just speak and act and present freely and create freely, you can see it's kind of starting to conform to social, the, the social constructs and constraints that it was supposed to be created to be a resistance to, or was an answer to in a sense, or at least presented itself to be so as much. But just be mindful that as everybody's kind of being put in a chokehold from these corporations down, they're putting a chokehold on the very individuals that have contributed to their bottom line, to the success of the platform, and that maintain it in a sense too, that drive the visibility, you know, that drive the, the um, popularity. There's so much to be experienced on this site. And a lot of it is very spiritual and conscious based, you know, that's, I, that I would, I don't even know the numbers, but I know how lucrative it must be just when you're looking at the, the stats of different creators on here that have been on here, you know, sharing a good word for years, many of them. So just be mindful not to sell your soul ultimately for the dollar. And it could be so simple and so primitive and and um, and uh, seem so trivial in the sense of just complying with these guidelines of, oh, you can't say this word, you can't say that word. I can't, you know, can't show the, the, the star card anymore because she's naked. I can't, you know, like it's one thing to be outright vulgar in the space, you know, and, and not to have, um, you know, given the, the, uh, adult label and, and warning, you know, 18 plus for adults only, whatever the case may be, but it's another for you to just be speaking naturally in the spirit and feel like you have to, um, scrutinize your, your very words, you know, scrutinize your own spiritual transmission. That just doesn't make any sense. And have no fear. There is a solution coming for all of this, an alternative space where there will be total freedom and liberation. Mark my words on that. 
But in the meantime, in this transitional time, be very, very careful not to sell yourself short on account of a monetary return that's not even sustainable in the long run because as we see, it'll be here today and gone tomorrow as soon as they feel like rolling out the next set of guidelines. You know, and as I said, what I'm seeing in the spirit is that they're collecting souls in a sense so that they can gather up that that um that uh that potential prosperity and take more off the top or have more control over it um monetarily. You know, there's more value in having the control over these individual spirits and if they can scare you into the conformity like almost beat you into submission now by way of fear of your security and stability from this channel that you've grown to you know to more or less depend upon then you'll be more easily manipulated you know like literally sh sheeps for the slaughter for whatever it is they're intending upon and it may not be as cynical as i am feeling it but what I do sense is that even with it not being a cynical intention of this establishment, it still has a cynical um, impact on the fluidity and the the um, the or or the organism of the spirit in its most natural sense. It it will taint the spirit and ultimately it'll disrupt the message that is really necessary for the masses to connect to at this time. So just be very mindful, very careful, be very liberal in how you express yourself and start to, most, most creators here that are most successful anyway, um, already have their own situation going on on the side where you're not dependent on super chats and donations or anything or monetized videos, ads, all that. You have your own situation and this is more or less just like, you know, advertisement for what you already have going on, which I think is most ideal, you know, a presentation of such so that people know you know, what else they can connect to, whether it be your own personal store, your website, your other separate platforms that are a little less stringent or your own app, or which is what I think it needs to be the wave ultimately is have literally cultivating your own space of creative expression outside of these major platforms because it's just too much control and censorship at this point. And that may be necessary in many regards, but in the way of the spirit, I just don't think that that's the way to go. And that's not for us, those that are messengers of the spirit to submit to as the highest authority, okay? So anyway, enough of that soapbox. Yeah, and this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is that. This wow. Now I've shoveled these cards for like an hour and cut the deck before I started. This is the Nine of Swords, which is about anxiety, um, eagerness about the future, being worried about um, you know, what's to come, sleepless nights, and it speaks to exactly the vibration that um, I'm speaking of that is inciting in the spiritual community where people are afraid if the video they post today will be to their detriment tomorrow. You know, if they you spend all these hours in preparation and letting and being a conduit of creativity to then come on and see that you you're not you're not receiving any any return or reward for your um for your sewing, you know, for, for the work that you put in. And in some regard, yeah, YouTube makes money off of ads and things like that. But the weight of of the um, site's credibility is the traffic itself that people are watching. So even if your video doesn't um, isn't monetized and you still have thousands, hundreds, however many viewers you had, that's still adding to the pot to give the site itself credibility amongst other sites where there's much less um, viewership. So don't be finessed into thinking that YouTube only cares about a dollar and what they're making money off of because it all matters in the grand scheme of this corporation and this business model. And you matter. So the la you, you are a great contributor to, to this um, platform. The last thing you should be having to do is worry about what tomorrow holds. So to eradicate yourself and liberate yourself from this um, this spirit, this low vibrational energy of anxiety, 
um, just begin to start cultivating your own hustle, you know, your own um, establishment outside of this, start to idealize life demonetized or without revenue at all coming in and 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 open your spirit to other opportunities for creative um cultivation that is uh lucrative and that you are ultimately the hot commodity no matter how many viewers you have no matter how many subscribers how many hours watched you know how many likes or dislikes you know how many comments it doesn't matter if you're adding value to this space you are a commodity you matter to this corporation and to this establishment and anything that's projected otherwise even by way of the restrictions of speech and things like that is just a tactic to ultimately control your your um, creative expression so release yourself from the anxiety by claiming your sovereignty and you know it's a pleasure to like i said this is the only platform i have right now i'm not on instagram or or facebook or or um yeah and let's see that's why i'm not feeling it this is a seven of swords i'm not on and and this oh hell no i'm bringing it and <laughs> yeah be careful y'all be ca wow like look at all this look at all this exactly where we started this is about still kill and destroy energy that ultimately is already defeated because what I see is that they're going to play themselves out of position ultimately. Yeah, because the world is turning. There's evolution happening every day and nobody's really, um, even if you initially answer to this conformity, you know, to this, these constraints and restrictions, ultimately, that's not the way of the world anymore. For, for this vibration to persist, not from corporations and not, you know, from from in, from corporations and, co and collectives down to individuals. So if, a, if there is some funny business going on here that's not upright, you know, in this establishment or any other platform that is that is working in the um, in the vein as such as this, you know, where creatives pretty much are the makeup of the business. If every, you know, maybe we need to take, pardon me, a, um, a page out of Hollywood's book, uh, you know, and, and all uh, conscious creators, spiritual content creators and the like, take a week off and see what happens. You know, see, see what the response is from the corporation unto the creator. If some things change, it'd be wonderful if, if there could be um, organization of such in that regard to really make a statement uh, in, in solidarity of the spirit, you know, because it's not right. It's not right. What I see just day to day and the people that I subscribe to and that I enjoy is this undertone of anxiety and fear that some that, you know, their their hard work and dedication and de divine devotion is going to be swept from under them. And this, the content's still there. The viewership is still there. But yet, look, Five of Swords is like this determination to be dominant over individuals and leave people in, you know, in this depressive, um, depleted state. But I see this as it being the turn of events for these organizations that one day are going to, like I said, it only takes a few strong ones to, to stand up and say, we're not taking this anymore. Um, people try to go off the platform, but they end up coming back because it's the largest space and the most reliable, you know, um, outlet of expression at this time, but that can change in the blink of an eye. Once upon a time, Facebook was the boom, but I'm not on there anymore. And many aren't. Many don't even that are on there aren't engaged in it. Twitter is taking its own twists and turns. Now it's X or whatever the hell. Yeah, because it's on its way out X <laughs> by the way that it's being you know, um, manipulated again by these big figureheads that, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of, of, um, 
what's the name, old boy's intentions, but it just doesn't feel good anymore, these platforms, you know? And YouTube is here and it's, it's still standing the test of time and people are still flocking to it day to day. You know, it's like the new American dream in a sense where you feel you can really establish yourself independently, you know? And now that that's shifting and there are more guidelines, it's like they're trying to find more reasons not to pay you on YouTube. So, you know, for those that the powers that be that may be listening, but probably not, because I don't have enough viewers at this time, probably for it to matter. But for the most part, it's, it's, it's no disrespect to the concept of this platform because like I said, I'm here and nowhere else, but there needs to be an honor of the commodities that have created it and that help to maintain it. And that's the missing piece here. There's something shady going on here. The seven of swords is not good money. And then coming right behind that with the five of swords, to me, the high point is that it's not gonna work. You know, it's gonna defeat itself as the seven of swords also does as well, where it looks like it, it thinks it's getting away with something. Ultimately, it brings its own demise. And then that confirmation is here with the Five of Swords, where it actually is defeated, you know, even though it thinks that it won some battle and is willing to invest any energy to win at all costs, no matter what the casualty, you know, um, from a, from, um, a corporate standpoint, it probably feels right to, um, you know, to ostracize the spiritual community in a sense, like they ain't going nowhere, you know, where else they gonna go type of thing. And that's the vibration, like where else can they go where there's this ex this experience of um, expression in this fullness of capacity? Yeah, go to Rumble, go to Twitter, go to Instagram, go to Facebook, but ultimately they are gonna end up right back here, similar to, how Hollywood is setting this stuff up to the executives there. So maybe this is the universal aspect, which makes a lot of sense with the world card. Okay, I get it. I feel like Hollywood is setting themselves up to it. I think the strike is still going on. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's going on longer than any side, either side intended. And I heard um, in one projection of it that the um the pers the the attitude of executives is we'll let them keep going till we they start they have to sell their houses and their apartments and you know pretty much starve them out you know ultimately is what it came down to like they'll be back the where else they gonna go Nollywood <laughs> you know what I mean like Bollywood there's only one Hollywood but ultimately it's very foolish because if one thing we saw through the pandemic is that people are going to find a way to express themselves. You know, that's just the outburst of the human spirit at this time and where they couldn't do it in the more um, conventional and traditional scenes and aspects. They found that's when YouTube really uh, jumped off in a bigger way because people flocked to there and other platforms to express themselves in a different way. So Hollywood may see, um, you know, see a, another impact in a sense as more independent uh, creators start to, to jump out. What I would love to see is all those people on the picket lines get together and form their own streaming service or their own, you know, studios, their own collaborative effort of creativity. There was enough of them on the picket line alone to do some damage, you know, but it's like, it, it comes down to us really getting out of this energy of submission to the establishment and not in, um, you know, a rebel without a cause type of energy. That's this energy here, you know, where it's like, I'm gonna do what I want, you know? No, it's like an organized rebellion in a sense, something that makes sense, something that is practical, something that is forwarding, you know, and, and prosperous holistically is the call ultimately that all those people that are fighting against the system can can uh, bond together and be the system, you know, that these old world orders of, of, of establishment 
and, and corporation and control and conformity only persist because we continue to submit to them. We continue to um, contribute and even create the the continuance, you know what I mean? But like I said, I feel like it's time's out for that really ultimately, whether the establishment see it or not, because I feel like people are not going to stand for being held under a thumb anymore. You know, it only takes a few to really stand up and stand out and for there to be um, a surge behind that, that order. And here, these cars are not favorable. Even with the worst intentions, it's still coming to some defeat or demise. And, and like I said, this can be on a grand scale. This can even be in personally, you know, your very own job, you know, that you go into every single day that's trying to uh, beat you into some submission of, of, of surrender to their policies that aren't fair, that aren't, um, that aren't lucrative for you as an individual, as a creator, as a contributor to whatever the organization might be, that leave you depleted for all that you've invested. That's not, that's not the way of the new world. So that energy must be balanced. Even in this, you know, I'm feeling guided to speak about this right now in this new surge of, and I spoke about this before, mind you, I'm not a toot toot beep beeper, but toot toot beep beep that I definitely said in another reading to be mindful of um, some resurgence of a world calamity, i.e. a pandemic number two. So now we're starting to see doctors and, you know, this re... Um, now we're seeing they're, they're putting back into play the uh, mandates of masks in certain places and certain establishments and um, schools are, and you know, there's a, 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 an ins a re a reemergence of the, the virus and they're, they're, at least they're, they are, um, what's the right word? Cause we're talking about mainstream media here. At least they are promoting and, and reporting on, a um, increase in cases happening already. And of course it's possible because I think people were more out and about this summer than ever before. So it's possible that rubbing elbows in a certain way could have, you know, reignited the infection in a certain sense. But just be mindful of what is being promoted on the the other side of that. Didn't we already, weren't we already told that masks weren't really as effective in preventing the spread. So why is that even a thing again? You know, why, why are we even considering, you know, uh, I can't even go there because it's just too much. But just again, like I said, it's happening on across the board and how I spoke about it then is how I see it now that they're seeing the evolution of the masses, that people are looking to be more independent, more um, sovereign in their spiritual and, and natural nature. And the, the corporations and so-called powers that be, the establishment itself that holds the keys right now to the masses, you know, doesn't see the benefit in a world full of independent souls. You know, it doesn't see the value there. It has to, it itself has to evolve to find a way to work with that evolution and within it and not to monopolize it. It may not ever do that. So in the meantime, it's just this recycling of old, um, of old, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, of old, um, I can't think of the word, but more or less the same same um, ideals again and again, you know, the same methods of madness to keep people in fear and keep people resistant to their sp their spiritual selves and their independent selves, even in, in the most basic energetic sense, to keep people afraid to break out, to speak out, to do something different outside of the box against the norm, you know, to be creative in the ways that um, allow them to be dependent in their own, you know, and, and, st and stable and secure in their own right. Where does, it's like this, how does the establishment make money off of that? 
you know, how can the establishment like YouTube make money when these creators are on here speaking their truths, changing the hearts and minds of masses by the minute and making money off of doing it? They, it's, a, it's like an energetic way to impose a distraction and a disruption in that flow so that if nothing else, even if they can't disrupt what you're doing on the outside, if they can disrupt your spirit and your focus so that you you distort the message and you, your intentions are averted, it can ultimately throw your creative vibration off and you won't even express yourself the same or manifest in the same way as you would if you're just free to do so, you know? So that's the... That's the interference here, you know, with this new world order. And I'm going to take you out too. Yeah, but the idea is just to be, um, to continue to stand your ground. I think this is the flow. I'm not even going to shuffle today. And I kind of saw that in my mind's eye, but I was like, huh? Okay, we're doing this. Um, the world card, you know, that, that shift is changing. The idea is to continue to stand your ground, protect your vibration, protect your purest energy. This is the conformity of the world here, out to to bring you back down to a subservient pers uh, point of view. You know where you don't, you're afraid to stand out. You're afraid to stand up. You don't even know if you can trust your energy and your vibration anymore because you have so much standing against it. People don't even know if they can. They can trust their own words freely anymore. Whereas before, if you're channeling and you're reading cards, you're reading energy, you're prophesying, nobody was thinking about what they're saying. You know, you're letting the spirit move you. Stand your ground energetically. This is what we're here for, to to speak the truth and, the, and to stand out from the crowd. Yeah, and this, it seems like it's, it's taken a long time to even get to this point of independence for many and now all of a sudden it's like a, a push back you know and it it may it may almost even feel like you're stagnant in your monetary um evolution and expansion in a sense but take heart that the knight of pentacles is one that is solid he's secure like even if it feels like slow money as opposed to those quick checks that was coming before if it's being made in integrity and in the truest heart and purest form of you, it's something that you can depend on. It may seem like one as opposed to the the thousand that you you know you may have gotten before, but made now in this instance, it will go much further, you know, on account of you standing your ground independently than any check, you know, any um, high value check would ever go with you conforming to, you know, these constraints and restraints and restrictions. And in, in, not in a rebellious way that's just outrageous. I want to be clear about that. I'm talking about in the ways that just don't even make sense. You know, and we know those ways because if you're spiritually in alignment, you know that saying the word murder or sex or rape or, you know, the, some of those so-called trigger words are the way to express some real um, things that are happening in the world right now. And although there may be some that stand to be triggered by that vibration, there are also some that stand to be healed because they know that their story is heard. They 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 feel seen. They feel connected to, you know. And that's the that's the point of the expression to be as raw and real as possible, so that people can find their ways to disconnect them from the um, the the derogatory impact of of that of those words because it shouldn't make an impact in the way in that way unless there's still some healing left to be done wouldn't you agree you know so here's that yeah and and the um two of swords like i said putting you in these positions where you don't you feel like you can't even trust your own thoughts your own words you don't know if you should express this um, you know, this new idea that you have or the idea that's coming to mind, like you almost feel like your hands are tied and bound. Um, you know, it puts you in an indecisive crossroads of a sense because it really does put you back up against the wall in this way because it's like, well, where else do I go? 
where else can I express, um, you know, I'm, I'm serving the people at this time, which many of us are in, in great ways and small ways, it, it all matters. So if you're serving the people and this has been your um, means of doing so, but now you're feeling restricted and you're feeling like, almost feeling like what you have to offer and say isn't, isn't good enough, isn't trustworthy, you know, that's, that's a terrible place to be in. And yet to feel like this is the only space really that you have to say what you have to say and to, you know, to continue to serve the community that you've been serving is, is, it's not cool. It's not cool. But yeah, be in the queen of at the adverse of this two of swords is the queen of wands who knows exactly what to do with her energetic force. She's fearless. She's courageous. This is Leo energy, more or less. It's all the fire sign energies, but Le but Leo is most pronounced with the queen of, of wands because, um, you know, given this, this stage of expression that we're talking about is, um, it, it matters, you know, it's, it's very on point that uh, the sun doesn't apologize from sh for shining, you know, a line doesn't apologize for roaring. If there's something to be said, if there's a light to be um, expelled or shown, then it's your, your responsibility to do so most authentically and with little regard as to any opposition because the Queen of Wands is fearless. She doesn't really, you know, she's led by her passions almost sometimes impulsively and compulsively, but talking about the upright of this force, this is about being led in spirit and in truth to do, to make an impact, to be an inspiration. You know, the fire force is, is um, it's, it's uh, trans transmuting, you know, it, it can cause transformation to whatever it connects with. That's what fire energy does. It's, uh, what's the word? Um, cap 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 <laughs> capitulating, you know, when you turn something into, um, yeah, pretty much when you turn some, when you turn the element into to gold, ultimately, it's, it's something, it's that word. I can't think of how to say it out loud, but co copulation, something like that. But that's what fire energy does. It makes matter into gold, you know, certain matter, of course, not all matter. You know, it can also disintegrate things as well. But, <laughs> but those that are here to, to, to stand the test of the heat, are ultimately elevated and transmuted, well, transformed into a higher vibration of being. You know, that's what this, the the energy of certain spiritualists, which the Queen of Wands is definitely spiritual in essence. She's both. She's grounded in her, in her, um, in her universal force and in her material um, impact. You know, she knows that she has the power of both at her hands. So imagine trying to contain a lion, you know, trying to contain a fire. We see what that gets us as, as the world is, you know, experiencing in, in certain places, you know, it's, it's, it's very hard to do so, you know, and, and more or less, once it connects to a, a source, it has to continue on on that course unless what it gets put out by water you know which is what is happening here that the fire is being extinguished and not in a high vibrational sense and not in many ways justifiably so it's they're trying to extinguish the fire of the spirit so that it can be controlled in some other forceful way as some other force yeah and looky here exactly Exactly. Do I want to keep going? No, because I don't want the Queen of Swords looking at that because that is not her vibration. You know, we'll do, I'll do a few other little cards down here, but we got the Ten of Swords trying to bring endings and it's all, it's a betrayal to the community is what the Ten of Swords is because you're betraying the very community that has helped to build this commodity to what it is. That is the commodity. You know, that people that stand up for themselves, speak out, speak loud, speak proud, are, are ultimately laid to rest in some way, shape, or form. And where they hit you the most, obviously, is in your pockets. But that's a direct effect to your spiritual force. Because if you're insecure about your survival and your stability, it's automatically going to impact your expression, your spiritual 
um, expression, you know, and your your energetic impact. It will it will make a difference. We see it every day, and those that are in this on this platform absolutely experience it. Yeah, and 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 to cause instability. That's exactly what this is for. Instability in what? Your emotional self. Yeah, and then we got the Empress. So thank you for ending this just where I would love to end. Because that's the ultimate result. Is that you cannot, you, you cannot quench the spirit. The Empress is the highest queen in the deck. So like I was saying here, it's a betrayal on stable communities. Stable, you know, they helped. They gave you this opportunity, and I'm saying they, but I'm not specifically, I'm, I'll say I'm not exclusively speaking about this platform. I'm, I'm specifically speaking of established platforms that are not in the highest alignment with the creators that are contributing to their business. And that is, this is one of those. I don't know about others because I'm not on others anymore, but this is definitely becoming one of those. And the betrayal and the, you know, the end of the, the endings and disruptions that is causing us to the stability of life where people have built empires now, livelihoods on the, um, you know, dependent on this platform as a source of income as a source of expression, as a, a, a medium of exchange. And, you know, it's like I said, what that that um, distraction and it is called, it also, I'm hearing depression, that's why I can't get the words through, is that's what it's been leading to, this depressive state of emotional um, instability in a sense, or just unstable emotions in general, as I've been saying throughout this entire time, because if you can't be on solid ground about your day-to-day -day life, you know, as a human being, you don't even know if what you create today is going to be worth anything tomorrow in the grand scheme of things, in the monetary sense, that can put you in a dark space. Look at this, a sandwiched in between the Ten of, Ten of Swords and the Moon card, where you literally don't know what tomorrow holds. You're in the dark, things are happening behind the scenes that you have no control over ultimately, because... You don't have control over what they decide to do behind the scenes in, in terms of the business, but what you absolutely have control over is yourself, your position of power and sovereignty in the midst of this you know, platform and others, in the social construct of life in general, you know, not even just in social media, but in life. Social media is just a, a small reflection of what's happening in the world that we're living in, where it's all about um, censorship and control is at the forefront because there's more fear now more than ever before that, that that loss of control and power is slipping from the grips of those that once held it so tightly. And then what does that mean? A loss in their bottom line, a loss in their income and their stability and the ivory towers and sweet sweet little lives that they've created from for themselves on the backs of others ultimately but as time's up for that the world is not sustaining that vibration anymore if you choose to commit to that and conform to that you i'm sure so, i'm sure will always well maybe not always you know i feel like it'll all be extinguished in a sense where nothing that low vibrational will sustain itself but there's still the choice, you know, to submit and surrender to it. Just as in Hollywood, some may be picketing and, and protesting and some may have not. You know, some may have valued um, working in the material exchange that affords their lifestyle and just to eat and to live for crying out loud, which is nothing sinister about that. But when you're faced with the choice of this or that spirit, you know, you know, your spiritual uh um your spiritual stability or your carnal satisfaction it's a hard choice to make because one of the two is far more tangible and far more confrontational than the other you don't even al always know what your spiritual investments will yield or even have yielded but you know what it's like to go hungry or or to miss a meal or to not be able to pay a bill you know so it's a hard choice to make but i think i'm here today to to 
um, you know, to really drive the point home that you are in control of, of that decision making. The highest queen in the deck, the reflection of that in the masculine energy, the highest king in the deck, and this is also Tauren energy most pronouncedly in the Empress card, which is all about stability and the comforts of life and, you know, the things that day to day bring, you know, are contribute to our survival, but in the in the highest vibration, even in the luxuries of life, the Empress is a representative of. So don't be afraid to make the tough decisions that will, you know, that ultimately make you stand out, maybe go against the grains, maybe keep you in the fray of society, even social media in a sense. Say what you need to say if it's justifiably led in spirit and in truth. Do what you need to do if you feel that incite of passion to, to do so. You know, don't be afraid of what tomorrow holds because like I said, it may be slow money or seemingly so, but there's a turning of events that are happening here where only the pure will be prosperous. That's it. You know, it's not gonna be people that are looking to sell their souls coming up anymore. They may be able to sustain themselves, but it's not going to be as prosperous and as lucrative as it once has been. And as soon as the establishment figures out that that is the case and that they're ultimately playing themselves out of position, they're going to be coming right back to your door, knocking on your door, wondering if you'll come join forces with them. We we got something for you. Here, you can have 50, 50, 50. Well, 50, 50, we can share it with you, you know? And just, you can come say what you want. And then that'll be the moment when you say, no, thank you. I already got my own platform. I'm already over here on this platform that's far more liberal, 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 and inclusive and exclusive in a sense as well. And, you know, I can speak my mind and, and express my spirit and share my creativity without any fear or resistance. And I'm supported. And even if that's something you create for yourself in some regard, i.e. an app, you know what I mean? That's still going to be the space more of peace of mind and contentment and creativity than any major platform could ever offer you, where you can literally be the sole proprietor of your estate, S-O-U-L, sole proprietor, sole executor of your estate. So let's see what's on the top and then we out share. Oh, and then that's the, yep, that's the chariot card moving forward. And it's been, it's, it seems like a battle here, especially in social media and against the world in a sense, right? To just be who you are and stand on your own, you know, stand firm on your own footing and on your own principles and your own ideas without being bombarded by propaganda and this perspective and this projection. Some within even your own intimate uh, surroundings, i.e. family and friends and even foes, but I'm talking more on a universal scale, on a macro scale of what we're all um, impressionable by and have been impacted by at this time. Stand your ground. Like you, this is like some a warrior, a, an official person doubling down on the Empress card. This is a masculine vibration of such in a sense that is a protector, a warrior, someone that is not, is fearless, you know, that is, um, you know, that has been through some great tests and trials and even some battles, but ultimately has stood to win the war over his or her soul. That's the expression here today, that even with the um, these conceptions of censorship and, and conformity and and control that are being lorded over your head day to day, you know, being... Um, that are pushing your back up against the wall, having you to make tough decisions that as if life isn't tough enough, you know what I mean? Making the world a little bit harder in the sense of you just living freely and, and, and soundly, you can make it through that. You can, you can push back against that. You have the tools, you have the resources all within you. You are the commodity. <laughs> if without you, like I said, if every scene, not even just the, the conscious community or spiritual community, but if every single creator took a stance against YouTube, what do you think they would do? They would do absolutely nothing with no one watching and no one posting. The, the problem is it, it's much harder 
to herd the sheep or the masses in a less derogatory sense to be um, organized in a, in a productive way without idealizing their security and their stability over their spiritual liberation. It's much harder to really get people with all the consider with all the people affected by Hollywood when in the grand scheme of things, that picket line is pretty small, you know, it's, it's pretty contained in, in, in the big picture of all the people that work for Hollywood or, or employed by or connected to or contributors of, you know, and that's the thing It's hard to really get the masses to, to come together for a common cause that ultimately will liberate us all without someone feeling like, well, I got to eat. Well, I got bills paid. Well, I got rent. Well, I got mortgage. My kids in school, like, you know, my baby need a new pair of shoes. You know what I mean? Like it's hard to see past those ideals of survival, you know, which is why in another reading I've spoken about, that's what we're being eradicated from this dire need to, um, fight against death in its most sensationalized way. It's not to say that we just flying off the seat of our pants and, you know, thrill seekers unto <clears throat> the detriment of our, of our lives, but it's really breaking down those walls and those um, projections and propagandas that will keep us in a fearful state in the most primitive sense that doesn't even really uh, have value or, you know, doesn't, doesn't even really take, shouldn't take precedence, but we allow it to, we give it a hold over our existence and, and also allow it to lord over our creativity as the commodities that we are, not realizing our invaluable essence, that we are priceless to the process of this system in every way, shape, and form as it is, to the, the bottom line of the establishment all around. You know, if we can recognize our sovereigns in that way, our value, our, our pricelessness, our invaluability, if that's a word, then we certainly can be victorious in the war in the long run, you know. And honestly, I say long run, but I don't think the long run is all that long. I don't think that those that are still operating in these archaic ways are realizing that the world is turning every minute, you know, that literally times have changed right under their nose. And even with their best professional projections, you can't, you cannot stop the natural um, divine ordinance of evolution. It cannot be stopped. When the world turns, there is no force that can really um, resist that, especially from a divine ordinance, as I said. When the spirit says it's time for us all to evolve as a people, as a collective, individually so as well, there is no establishment, earthbound establishment, that can truly be an obstructive force and be successful at it. Ultimately, it will end up in the very state of oppression and depression that it tried to impose. So keep your head up, keep creating purely, um, organically as your passions and, and um, spirit is guiding you to do so, to speak freely, no matter what the so-called consequences and resistances or restraints may present themselves to be. Know that you are the hot commodity. You are the light of the world and, and the agent of change that's helping this, um, to helping us to balance the scales in a way that will allow all to, you know, live in the freedom of their own existence as they choose to do so. Okay. Didn't know that this reading was going to take that turn, but I'm um, always obedient. To, to the expression, as you, as I've said, I'm, I am walking the talk, you know, I'm obedient, I'm obedient to what is being, you know, filtered through me to transmit accordingly. And I just pray the same for you. There's definitely a reward at the end of that divine dedication beyond, uh, divine devotion, I should say, beyond anything that the earthly realm can project to you as prosperity. Okay. So with all that being said, thank you for listening until next time. Peace.